I've been proud. Treading water that they drown in. I head on a swivel. Yeah. It's only really my surroundings. Hello and welcome to episode 239 of the Smash Accept Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Royer. You can find me on Twitter at DynastyDadFF. we got a great show planned for you tonight. We've been hitting on a, a foundational series on Twitter, trying to talk about guys that you can build around. Guys that, you know, last week's episode, while, while Snoog was on vacation partying it up in Vegas, Zoltan and I gave you guys, you know, a startup strategy. And part of that is investing in foundational quarterbacks. If you can get the quarterbacks... Everything else is so much easier to predict. Quarterbacks have that 50-50 hit rate. Nobody wants that next Zach Wilson, that next Trey Lance. We want that quarterback that we can invest in, and it's a set it and forget it. That way, when we come to our rookie drafts, you can go ahead and you can take some more risks and take shots on your guys. Nobody better to talk quarterbacks with than my main man, Snoog. How you doing? Doing good, Dad. Still recovering from Vegas. I mean, it's good to be back on the pod. Good to talk ball. Nothing better than jumping on and talking the centerpiece of your fantasy football rosters, especially in super flex formats, the most important position. We prioritize these guys for the first two to three rounds of startups. Like we're here to nail these top 12 guys and give you some mm-hmm. more guys after that. So I'm excited. And my blueprint for this is like, I, I've been putting that out. My super flex startup blueprint is to get two of these guys in the first three rounds. Cause if you can get yourself two foundational quarterbacks, now you're in that area where snook, I know you've had rosters and I know I have as well, where it's like, how do I replace what happened with Justin Fields? How do I replace Aaron Rodgers? How do I replace these guys? And now all of a sudden, you you find yourself going out there and, and getting desperate and trading a second for Gardner Minshew or a first for, you know, for for Bryce Young or something like that in that area where now you feel like hopefully they can do something, right? Like we want to avoid the Derek Cars, We want to avoid the Geno Smiths. And we want to load up on these young elite guys and then get a Matthew Stafford, a Kirk Cousins, a Jared Goff. You know, one of those guys is your QB3, because when you have these guys, it just makes life so much easier. Yeah, exactly. That's what it comes down to, right? Is it's like, you have to understand the values, the tiers, and you got to understand that like QB is a position that just because they're 30 years old, Dak Prescott, doesn't mean that they're dead. He (laughs) just misses that. So for our criteria, criteria for a foundational quarterback, they need to be 29 and under. They need to be a guy that is taken in your top three rounds of your startup draft and a guy that has longevity for value. Dak Prescott is the perfect guy to pair as a QB2 with one of these guys if you don't Absolutely. get him. And that's, that's why he's like the A.J. Brown of the wide receivers. We were talking about that. People are like, A.J. Brown doesn't fit into my foundational criteria of being 25 and under and having longevity, and Dak Prescott doesn't fit into that. But these are guys that, like, dude, cash in on that. Dak Prescott's 30. AJ Brown's 26. That doesn't mean they're dead in dynasty. That just means you get them for, you know, you get them for a three year value window a little bit cheaper than these other guys. Exactly. Yeah. And and when they hit, they hit, right? They have top three to five finishes on their Mm -hmm. season. So I love that discount you get on talented guys. So the first guy, and I'm, you know, we kind of go back and forth of who gets to go first. This week it's me. The 101 still, and my quarterback one is Josh Allen. Josh Allen is just the safest, the most elite quarterback that we've had in maybe forever. Like he has been in 2021 and 2023, the QB one overall. He's been top two each of the last three seasons. It's an absolute lock for Josh Allen because of what he can do with his feet. Everyone's like, okay, well, Patrick Mahomes closed the gap. And I agree. You know, like I don't have any any quarrels with anybody taking – Mahomes over Allen. What I get mad at is when I see people taking CJ Stroud over Josh Allen because Josh Allen is still just 28 years old. He's in the prime of his career. He is a lock to run for double digit touchdowns. He's a lock to run for 700 yards. He's a lock for 35 touchdowns. When you put that all together, this is like Cam Newton on steroids with longevity, with, you know, the the type of pedigree that we want to build our teams around. When you draft Josh Allen, you can sell him for four firsts. You can sell him for, you know, Jordan Love and multiple firsts. This is that guy that you want, which is why it's so important when you do your Kentucky Derby drafts. Take the 101. 
take Josh Allen or trade him back because I've done it where I've traded back from the 101 to the 105 where Burrow would go, then trade from the 105 to the 110 where Anthony Richardson would go and go from the 110 to the 202 where Justin Herbert's going and adding, adding, adding to a point where I have a stacked team right off the bat. So Josh Allen has the longevity for the next three to four years to be in that top three conversation year in and year out. If Keon Coleman starts to ascend, if Dalton Kincaid takes the next step, if, you know, Khalil Shakir moves into that area, Josh Allen is a value right now. Like, I'm, he should not be available in a trade, but people are starting to say, okay, I'm willing to trade Josh Allen now. And I'm buying that dip wherever I can get him. I've bought him in multiple leagues because I haven't been able to buy him since 2021. You know, and that's when I predicted the breakout. Now I'm buying him and I'm like, I, I got to get more Josh Allen. Yeah, I mean, he is the best fantasy football player we've ever seen, right? Like, he is the cheat code. He's better than Cam Newton, better than Mike Vick, better than mm-hmm. any of those guys. Like, he is the one of the most talented quarterbacks the league's ever seen, still in his prime. The Bills haven't really done shit to build around him, right? Yeah. Like, they gave him digs, and that's it. Like, they got to figure things out, get that old line going, get that run game going. He's like yeah, but, never he's never had a good run game. Like get get this yeah. guy some pieces. We haven't even seen his ceiling yet, and I truly believe that he and is unbelievable. The the comment I always get, it's like whenever I put it on there and I get the Dolphins fans, the Dolphin fans always attack me because I don't like Tua and I love Josh Allen. They're like, ah, you're that that Bills he turns Homer the coming ball through. Over. Who cares if he turns the ball over? He runs for 70 yards a game. So if he throws two picks, he's still getting three yards or three points added on just for his legs before the touchdowns. So that's the difference, right? Everyone keeps saying, and I put a thing out right now, I think for 2024, there's about seven quarterbacks who could be QB1 overall. All of them have a rushing floor of 400 yards. That's why a guy like Stroud, a guy like Tua, you know, a guy like Joe Burrow, I don't feel like they ever get to a QB1 overall season unless they throw 45 touchdowns. So that's why Josh Allen is the cheat code. That's why he's the QB1. That's why I value him a first over anybody except for Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, exactly. And I'll make this nice and easy. My my second QB, Patrick Mahomes. Best QB in football. He's going to be probably one of the better, if not the best, second best quarterback of all time right behind Tom Brady when it's all said and done. Three Super Bowls already. He's got MVPs. Like he has done it all. He is an absolute monster. This guy is a cheat code in six point passing. Mm-hmm. Like he can throw for fit. He's thrown for fifty touchdowns in a season. He's thrown for five k yards. He's he will do it again. Eight hundred. He will do it again. Like he will. He will heat up. And this year is a pretty damn good year for him to be like that forty eight hundred yard and like forty touchdown guy. He has QB one overall upside. He runs a bit too. He's more mobile than like the Joe Burrows, the Justin Herberts. He'll get you some rushing touchdowns. He'll get you some rushing yards. He He's the best quarterback in the league, man. He's tied to Andy Reid. He is a guy that you're going to look at 16, 15 years, or like 10 years, 12 years from now, and you're going to be like, damn. Like, you're going to be looking at him. He's going to say like 38 years old, 17 years experience, and you're going to be like, I drafted this guy like 16 years ago, and he has been a QB1 every single year, barring injury since then. Like, he's the Aaron Rodgers. He's the Tom Brady. It's Set it and forget it. I mean, if you can exactly. get 102 and super flex, sign me up. Yeah, and Patrick Mahomes, we did a podcast on all the trades you can make to get to Patrick Mahomes because he was obtainable. Then they go and add Hollywood Brown, they add, add Xavier Worthy, and now it's like, okay, you know, like if you could still buy Patrick Mahomes, go ahead and do it. Because I've seen opportunities where he goes behind CJ Stroud in a startup, and I'm like, stop, J- just stop, don't do it. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen are cut above every single other quarterback there is. The next person that I have, and Snoog, this might be a little bit hot take for you, but I mean, he was the QB1 in 2022. He's been top five every single year that he started. Jalen Hurts for me is still the QB3 for me. And I got a a message here, and I love when you guys do this. We are on YouTube. Make sure you guys hit that, that subscribe button on YouTube. You guys can, you know, Jump in here. Give us comments. JP Tay says, I got Hurts and AR-15. I think I'm good, but I need that exciting season for Anthony Richardson. You're going to love that because I think Hurts and Anthony Richardson are two of those seven guys that I think could finish QB1 on the season. Jalen Hurts, you can say what you want. You can say he turns the ball over. You can say he gets added points from the tush push. You can say that that might get banned. You can say that Jason Kelsey retired. The bottom line is, he was still a top five quarterback last year at what I think we saw his floor. 
I think we saw Jalen Hurts' floor. He's tied to a great, you know, system where he has A.J. Brown, where he has Devonta Smith, where now he has Saquon Barkley. He has Dallas Goddard. I mean, he has one of the most prolific offenses there is. He's got great legs. And Snook, he was banged up last year. He was not running the same way because he was wearing the knee brace all year. I think we see Jalen Hurts bounce back and bounce back in a big way. And I've seen people, Snoog, I've seen drafts where he's gone 109. And I just, I don't understand it because people feel like he's a quarterback that's falling off. I think we just had a little bit of a down year and that happens with quarterbacks, right? We saw that happen where, you know, where Patrick Mahomes had a down year and people started to be like, oh, well, I'm out on them. You know what I mean? So I am not out on Jalen Hurts. I am all the way in. Give me all the Jalen Hurts I can get. Sam Wise said, what's up, fellas? Love it. Thanks, Sam. Sam's in my uh, in the Fantasy Cares Eliminator, the Dynasty Dad division. I just wrapped that up. That was a blast. I love doing those things for, you know, what we can do for Fantasy Cares and Scott Fishball 14. Snoop, there's a rumor out there. This might be official that we will be giving away uh, a, a potential golden ticket. So, Keep, you know, stay tuned. We might be able to do that for you guys. So, you know, it's just something super exciting that we want to be part of that community. So I'm taking Jalen Hurts at 103. Who are you taking at four? And not 103, but QB3. Another foundational asset where I think he's going to be relevant for four to five years. And that's all that matters for me. In Dynasty, when we're talking quarterback snoog, everybody's like, well, Mahomes could last 10 years. Absolutely. If you're playing in a dynasty league where someone had Patrick Mahomes for 10 years, I'm really bored. I want to get in another league. You know, like I will not have a quarterback more than two to four years. Yeah, I'm going to go with my guy here. And he's my QB three in dynasty, 22 years old. Let's talk about CJ Stroud. I mean, this is a guy that lit the league on fire last year as a rookie. He turned the second worst team in the NFL around into a playoff team that was literally a legit contender like mm-hmm. they beat they beat one of the best defenses in the nfl they went and played the best team on paper and the best defense and played a decent game against them for majority of it until just blow out points in the end he did that without tank dell for eight games he put up 4100 yards in 15 14 and a half games however you want to look at it he paced to lead the league in passing yards as a rookie QB with mm-hmm. fifth and sixth backup linemen starting. Like half the line was hurt. Tank Dell missed seven, eight games. Dalton Schultz missed three games. They had they had the they were the worst running offense in the NFL. They had zero yeah. run game. It was the CJ Stroud show. It really mm-hmm. was. He and elevated everyone on that team. He's the reason you don't. You don't exactly. you don't play too hesitant in your rookie drafts for quarterbacks. You know, like yeah. if you believe in a guy, like you and I both believed in him last year, we have tons of shares with it. And it's like if you believe in a guy, go get him because you're gonna buy him for rookie pick one oh six and now he's worth the one oh three startup, one oh four startup. I gotta ask you the difference, and I I keep getting people asking me the difference between Hertz and Stroud. And what I say is if you're playing four point passing touchdowns, Jalen Hurts is the guy. Because yeah. C.J. Stroud will not be a top three quarterback in a four-point passing format. It's just not going to happen because Allen, Stroud, Kyler, Anthony Richardson, you know, all those guys are going to put up that rushing numbers, which just favors them. But I think in a six-point passing, I would prefer C.J. Stroud over Jalen Hurts. And I think that's the differentiator yeah. for me is I really want to go out there and invest. I'm having a hard time trading C.J. Stroud. I've been trying to offer him up in all my leagues and no one seems to want to pay what he's at. There's like a disconnect, right? Where everybody knows he's a top five quarterback, but no one really wants to pay up for that, that top five type price. Have you been noticing that you're in your leagues as well? Because I'm not seeing a lot of CJ Stroud league trades. If you go on keep trade cut, if you go on DLF, there are a ton of Jalen hurts trades, but there are not a lot of CJ Stroud trades. Yeah, I mean, I think people are just kind of comfortable with his price right now in that top five, top four range. I think he's pro- properly valued. He just got Stephon Diggs. He's got Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs locked in there. He's got Joe Mixon. They're finally going to have a run game, hopefully. Mm-hmm. That that matters, right? That opens up the field. That does so much. It takes a lot off the quarterback. It, like Stroud was doing so much for that offense. He's going to be able to just pick defenses mm-hmm. apart. Not many players in the NFL have 5K upside, and this dude could truly throw for 5,000 yards and like 40-plus touchdowns any given year within the next three years. That's why I have him so high. We saw Justin Herbert do it, 
uh, points and six point passing. Mm -hmm. We've seen Mahomes do it. We saw Matt Stafford do it. Four hundred thirty points and and six point passing. And the dude threw like nineteen picks. Like C.J. Stroud has the same ceiling as everybody else, but mm -hmm. people just think it's so rare to to have that type of year. Like he could have that year, and if not, he's gonna be a consistent top ten quarterback. Like he'll finish five, he'll finish six, he'll finish three, he'll finish two, he'll finish seven. That's what I want. Like that's what I want. I want that safe, elite, foundational asset that can throw for that, have the weapons around him, build the offensive line, build the system around him. He could truly have an MVP season within the next two seasons, and I think that he is gonna be absolutely crazy in 2023 with this Texans offense. They have a great defense. They've built around him. Slow it going into year two with him. He's going to put up numbers. If he finishes QB1 overall, I, I would not be shocked. Like People think he's a statue QB. He's not necessarily a statue QB. He's just so good at throwing the ball, he throws the ball instead. Like, yeah. He had he had like three rushing touchdowns in like 14 and a half games. Like He, he could have a year where he gets five, maybe six rushing touchdowns. Like squeezes in a few QB sneaks and he he's pretty mobile. Like he's great at extending and moving mm -hmm. outside of the pocket. He just chooses he keeps his eyes downfield. That's what separates him as an NFL talent from like looking in a, in a fantasy fantasy lens. But yeah, man, sign me up. CJ Shaw, QB three and six point passing. And that's what it's gonna take to have a QB one season for him is five rushing touchdowns. You know, and that kind of puts him in there. I love that you said it. You said foundational. You're buying into the the Smash Except lingo. Speaking of Smash Except, Marty, shout out to you. He said, Sup fellas, can't wait for Smash Except 16. I am just a glutton for this. I just keep keep drafting with you guys. I love it. You know, so we are starting Smash Except 16. That is a Patreon only. Snoog, right now in the Patreon is is just a booming time. There are 300 plus people in there talking shop 24-7. You know, I, I've, I've been talking to some guys in there and say, hey, what do you think? Every single one of them's like, dude, I love it. Like, it's exactly what you said, Dad, is it's a group of guys that actually care about my dynasty team rather than my girlfriend and my wife hating me for talking about it, rather than my guys at work saying, Dad, yo, shut up. I'm done hearing about Jalen Hurts. I know he's winning you championships. Join that today because it is like... Honestly, the tiers are going to start changing up a little bit, but we love you know what we're involved with and, and what we're able to do there. The other guy messaged in here, and you guys are just jumping in. Benny Bo, he just says, "Hey, I'm new in the Patreon. I love it. You know, so that that's Go awesome. Benny. I love those shout outs. You know, and we're doing things where we're helping people with their rookie drafts. You know, like we are." helping people with their startups we're doing draft assistance we're doing we got all of our rooms in there snoog and i are doing redraft and dynasty content 24 7 with a lot of great people that we're really trying to push things out there so thanks again for all the support that you guys do if you guys are, are interested in it sign up today if you don't like it i'll give you your money back like snoog and i are so you know confident in what we're doing be in there for 30 days if you don't want it it's a money back guarantee we have had zero people request it, but I will gladly give it. You know what I mean? So, and then we got another guy out here. Jacob FF said, best rookie draft help out there. Guys are asking us on the clock, literally, what are we doing with this draft? How are we approaching this? We'll hit you up. So, back to the uh, the lecture at hand, I should say. So, we're going to talk about the QB5 here, Snoog. And this is one of the most difficult guys in Dynasty to trade for me right now. He won me so many championships last year. I have over 50% exposure to Lamar Jackson, and he's very difficult to trade right now because of the Derrick Henry news. But you look at what he did. He was a top seven quarterback again. You know, they're talking about he he's trying to thin up to, you know, get more rushing yards, to be more nimble. I think him and Derrick Henry are a match made in heaven. Derrick is going to steal 10 to 13 touchdowns like Gus did every single year. But I think his demise is greatly over exaggerated. Like Derrick Henry's gonna score touchdowns, so did Gus Edwards. He's he's getting more weapons. If we keep Mark Andrews healthy, if Zay Flowers is there, there's this rumor that Rashad Bateman's becoming a football player. All those things happen. Lamar Jackson could see his passing stats improve. He could see his efficiency improve. And you know, he's a very tough guy, especially in four point passing to pass up as the QB five for me and in that same tier as Hertz and Stroud. Yeah, I, I think at four point passing, you could even argue him over CJ, right? You could put him in Hertz at three and four. He, this guy, Lamar Jackson, is a phenomenal talent, man. Like he is as good as they get. Two time MVP. He hasn't really done much in playoffs. Hasn't won, mm -hmm. made a Super Bowl. Hasn't really done much with that. But he is just phenomenal. And when he's on fire, he is on fire. And he didn't have Andrews for most of the last year. Like he has Andrews, healthy Zay Flowers, Derrick Henry now. Like 
He's playing in the best offense he's ever played in mm-hmm. right now going into next year. The best thing about Lamar is he has such a good floor because like he just organically gathers um, rushing yards. Oh, yeah. Whether, whether it's designed play. We're seeing a lot less designed Lamar Jackson runs, especially with Derrick Henry now. Like Lamar had like, what, five QB or five rushing touchdowns last year. Like you're probably going to see that again. Like there's yeah. no more 10 rushing touchdown Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson doesn't have 480 point ceiling like Josh Allen does. We saw it once. It's not happening again. I can promise you that. Yeah, 2019. Lamar Jackson. Lamar one. Yeah, he yeah. is. He's just not. He's gonna rush for 500 to 700 yards. He's not gonna. That that's where I get stuck with him. Like in six point passing, like give me Joe Burrow over him. Like give me these guys over him. Mm-hmm. Like he's probably like my QB six. The, QB the biggest seven. trade for me is trade Lamar Jackson for Anthony Richardson or Kyler Murray in a first. And I keep trying yeah, to do that everywhere. Give me Kyler all day. And because I play in so many smash except leagues, and they hear me yell that all the time, they yeah. won't do it. You know what I mean? Lane Lamar. Caballero, another great guy that's in the YouTube channel. Said, hey, he feels like the safest and most affordable quarterback in this tier. And I'm with you. Like, I feel like he is he's become a value, which is weird to me. That Lamar I need Jackson. To see him, I need to see him throw for four thousand yards and thirty touchdowns for me to be like, all right, he still has that same ceiling he once had. Yeah. He's he's not rushing for ten touchdowns. He's not gonna rush for a thousand yards like he once did. Derrick Henry is there to make Lamar's job easier. Like they don't but how, finish, they don't how care long about is he fantasy. there? They don't he's care only there our, one year, maybe yeah, two. That's true. You know what I mean? So they don't care about our fantasy teams. Like they want to no. win a Super Bowl, and that's keeping Lamar healthy because Lamar hasn't been healthy. Correct. Like he, his knees, his cat, he's he's frail. His body is not built like Josh Allen to run people over. Even though that's yeah. how he plays. Are it's, you it's worried at, at all about about him losing weight? Do you feel like that is a good thing or a bad thing? I don't really care. I, I mean, he's still an elite quarterback. Every time he steps on the football field. He has all the tangibles between the eyes. He sees the field well. He's a field mm-hmm. general. He can run. He can throw. He's just not a high volume passer. And I'm scared that he's not going to be a high volume rusher anymore. And mm-hmm. then it's like, all right, what the heck is he then? Is he going to be yeah. a top ten quarterback? Yes. Is he going to be top three? Probably not. Yeah, your guy. You you already alluded to him at six. I mean, you you got a six point passing touchdowns. This guy was a screaming value last year once he got injured because people are saying, oh, man, he's not the same guy. I think it's completely about the injury, but Joe Burrow at six feels like really good. Yeah, I mean, back-to-back 400-plus point seasons, 4,500 yards, 30-plus touchdowns. Like That's the that's like the realistic like high-end floor he has. The ceiling is that 5K, 35, 40 touchdowns. Maybe he can get there with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And Jermaine Burton, like, you, come on, like, you got to be able to get there with those. If you want to be and consider yourself, people were putting him over Josh Allen. Like, NFL people and fantasy mm-hmm. people were. Like, if you're going to put him on that pedestal, this this dude better be throwing for 4,800 to 5K yards, 40 touchdowns, and at least in a year or two within the next five years. Like, he, he should give us those spike, spike years within the next handful of years. And he's just a pro- prolific passer. They, they built around him in the offensive line. They built up that defense a little bit. They made some moves. Healthy Joe Burrow is a good sign. These are the guys we're looking for, right? Like these are the guys that you want to pair with the Anthony Richardson. So you have that foundational safe, QB that you know can play till they're 37 years old and, and they're not relying strictly on their legs and their athleticism. Mm-hmm. And then you pair that Richardson with him for that upside shot and take that that chance, right? Take that guy that could be that 800-yard rusher and that double-digit touchdown score on, on the ground. And this is what I like about Joe Burrow. And you just have so many cool stacks you can get with him. Like the Chase Burrow stack, the Higgins Burrow stack. Like, I, I love that. Like, I live for that. I love the Jalen Hurts, AJB stack. Like, Th- those add value because when they have those big games together, like you're dropping 180, 80 to 100 mm-hmm. points in your league just in those two players alone, and that's that's going to win you weak. So, yeah, and I think a lot of people really try to overinvest in the stack. Like, I'm not going to trade in an area where it doesn't make sense for me. You know, I'm not going to trade. I'm not going to draft AJ Brown. Not going to lose a trade to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to draft AJ Brown over Marvin Harrison Jr. or CD Lamb or just try to go in that area because I feel like I want the stack. It's when it's AJ Brown or you know Puka Nakua or it's AJ Brown and and Drake London. Okay, no, I want I want the stack there. Let's go with that. Uh, seven man, I really want to say Kyler Murray here, you know, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you have Kyler because you know I'm always hashtag always Kyler. I'm gonna go Caleb Williams at seven just for the the value of the new guy on the block, a lot younger, who's 22 years old. I think Caleb Williams is going to come in. Obviously, in my opinion, be the first. Bears quarterback to throw for 4,000 yards. He has the best 
complement of weapons that a 101 has ever gone. Out he of all in the, the league, he has the best yeah. weapons in the league right now. Like it's and not even close. Out of the quarterbacks that have gone 101 in your super flex draft and first overall in the NFL draft, all seven of them have hit, meaning they have been QB ones within the first two years. It happens. It's going to happen with Caleb Williams. I'm seeing some of you guys say, "Yo, Dad, I saw on seven on sevens he was throwing picks." He's learning the system, right? I don't care if you think he's a diva. Caleb Williams is the real deal. If you want to trade Caleb Williams for Kyler Plus, Richardson Plus, Love Plus, Herbert Plus, Purdy Plus, sure. If you want to take Caleb Williams and add a second to get Burrow, Lamar, Jalen, or add a first to get Stroud, I'm okay with that. You know, this is where it's, it's, these are foundational guys. I want two of these guys, but that doesn't mean I have to take Caleb, you know, and I think he's the first guy where you start to debate in a startup draft. Should I take Justin Jefferson or this quarterback? You know, and I think I always like to have the quarterbacks. Caleb Williams to me is going to be foundational. I had a lot of people reach out and say, dad, you can't say a quarterback is going to be foundational before they even play. But I think we have a spot here where this is a, an exception to the rule. You know, th- there are people that say, well, Dad, Trevor Lawrence, you said the same thing with. And it, you're right. We did miss on Trevor Lawrence, but he ha- has not lost an excessive amount of value. Trevor Lawrence went from the 106 to 110. And then after a really bad rookie season, he fell to 112 to 201. After a bad sophomore season, he was still going in the second round. He had a not so great third season, and he's still a third round startup pick. So, Try to tell me a wide receiver that's going to go in that range that has two bad years that isn't going to fall into round five, six, seven. Exactly, yeah. And, and the thing, too, to highlight with Caleb Williams is he has that rushing floor. Like He yeah. has that 400 to 700 rushing yard season. I think he could be a guy that gets 500 yards and like six to seven rushing touchdowns. I mean, look at his, mm-hmm. his collegiate rushing numbers. They were great. He's a good athlete. He's fast. He can move. He's a smart runner. He's yeah. very like Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Jalen Hurts, like where they're not Lamar Jackson, like Kyla Murray, Anthony Richardson athletes, but they're very smart runners. And like yeah. they're those mobile West Coast type of quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Kale Williams fits that mold. I mean, this guy, like you said, like he has potential QB one overall upside if he hits his well, true ceiling in this offense. And that's why a lot of people in their comps, you know, you and I both said it's a it's a bigger Kyler Murray or a, you know, a Patrick Mahomes light. Because if you look at those guys run, they don't run first. They run smart and they run there. Now, I mean, I don't think he's as athletic as Kyler. I think he's somewhere in between the two. But if he runs for 400 yards a season and two to three touchdowns with that, that is enough to put him in that QB1 category because he's going to throw 30 touchdowns and he's going to throw 4,000 yards. Set it and forget it. I gave you Kyler. Go ahead. He's, He's sitting over here behind me to the right, you know, like, Kyler's always on my shoulder pointing at me while I do the podcast. Hit me up, man. Why is it Kyler? I agree with you taking Caleb 7 over Kyler. I think I'm comfortable with that at this point. But Kyler's 8 for me. Like, I'm taking him 8 all day. I officially, like, I'm comfortable putting him over Justin Herbert and those guys. Like, Kyler Murray is a guy that is ridiculously talented. Like, he is always going to average 20-plus mm-hmm. points per game. Coming off the ACL tear as a rushing quarterback, he was still phenomenal with zero weapons on offense. Like, his wide receiver one was like Marquise Brown and Trey McBride finally broke out and, and looks phenomenal, which is even better for Kyler this year. They drafted a generational talent in Marvin Harrison Jr. They brought mm-hmm. in Zay Jones. Like they signed these guys. They brought in these That's weapons. very underrated move. I like that Zay yeah, Jones signing. Very he's a very solid possessional number three option for a team like that that will have those big games and step up when you need him, like that mm-hmm. Michael Gallup type. They needed that for Kyler. They brought in Benson, that running back room. Connor and Benson, they're going to be able to run the ball well. They have a good offensive line. They're building something there in Arizona. And Kyler is a guy that has been in the MVP talks. He was the MVP favorite at some point. He's finished in the top five to six multiple times. Like Mm -hmm. He is consistently finishing high when he plays healthy in full seasons. He got Marv. Now he got his true generational wide receiver. He's got that bag, that big contract, five-year deal. Sign me up, man. I mean, I'm all for Kyler. Me and you were drafting him in the third, the second, the fourth round of startups in some leagues last year. He's mm-hmm. my most owned mm-hmm. dynasty QB and I'm still collecting him, right? Like I'm still getting Kyler Murray shares because he's still cheap. 
I'm getting him. He's like QB 13 on like the consensus sites. Yeah. Keep trade cut. Fantasy we're higher than any. We're, yeah. We're higher than anybody we have been. And I, I it's, it's going to happen to I me. Mean, the last time he had a legitimate wide receiver one was the first year DeAndre Hopkins came over and he finished QB two that season. That's what you get from him. You're going to get a top seven finish, but you're going to get QB two seasons. If I can get anything on top of Kyler for Joe Burrow, he's younger than Joe Burrow. Like yeah. I, I think if I can get it first on top of Kyler, I'm for for either Jalen or even CJ Stroud or Lamar Jackson, I'm gonna smash that. Like I think Kyler Murray, when this year is over, will be a top six quarterback, maybe even top five when it's all said and done by the end of the year. He's the other guy good, dude. the other guy that could jump into that area is Anthony Richardson. So this is the biggest swing, right? In a startup, this is very, very tricky area where if I invest in Anthony Richardson, man, I am making sure that I move myself up and get Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott. I want another quarterback that I can pair with him just for the simple fact of Anthony Richardson played in five games. He finished two of them. The two he finished, though, we saw, yeah, QB2, QB5. We saw Josh Allen type play from him. You know, and I think that's Cam Newton plus, I think is in his range of outcomes. His but being injured is also in there, right? So like that's the tricky part with Anthony Richardson. I would love to move him up. I would love to say we get into that area. But I love that. Chad said also Murray could be a jumping point to Mahomes or Allen in a future trade. And I like that too, because you can go and move yourself into that even more elite area. But I, I think Anthony Richardson is going to be a guy that either wins you leagues or you're going to be you. <laughs> you, exactly right. Like I, I think we're in an area with, with Lamar Jackson where he is just safe. You know, he's going to put you there. Anthony Richardson is someone that if he plays all 16 games, he will finish top five guaranteed. He mm -hmm. could finish QB one overall. If he plays all 17 games, I think that's in the range of outcomes, but if he gets hurt again, now all of a sudden we start to think, oh man, what is this guy going to be? You know, so that's that tricky part, Snoog, is, is how risk averse are you? Like, do you move back to Justin Herbert, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott? Do you move yourself up? And that's what I love about Dynasty is you can trade however you want. You don't have to love Anthony Richardson. At the 110 in a startup, you could take CeeDee Lamb if that's what you like. If you want to move yourself and move up to Stroud, move up to Mahomes, move up to Allen, you can just get out of that area if he's my QB2, Anthony Richardson is so sexy. I have teams where Josh Allen's my QB1 and Anthony Richardson's my QB2 and I have Jared Goff as my QB3 because now I have a guy that I know if Anthony Richardson misses time, Jared Goff's going to put up borderline top 12 numbers. And that's the key with Anthony Richardson is making sure you have Joe Flacco on your team because he'll be your guy that you can throw in if he misses yep. time and having a Stafford, Goff, Cousins to plug in when you need him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Ooh, I got excited I, there. <laughs> yeah. You and I were pounding the drum for Anthony Richardson mm -hmm. all, all off season going into that rookie draft. I mean, I have receipts back to like 2022 in the fall time when he was like first time starter for Florida. Like I saw something special with him. I think he saw the field. Excellent. Like I think he was one of those guys that you could tell was raw but once he puts it all together, he's going to be a phenomenal player. Like he mm -hmm. saw the field well. He can make crazy plays. He's best athlete at the quarterback position to ever sniff the combine. He is tied with Shane Steichen, who's a QB guru, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts. He benefits with these rushing big body quarterbacks that can mm -hmm. make plays downfield and with their legs. Anthony Richardson, he's got the old line. He's got the run game. He's got the weapons around him with A.D. Mitchell, Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, Jelani Woods. Like, all signs are pointing towards the breakout for him. He's just in that tough, tricky range where it's like, do I just take Kyler, who I know it's going to happen with, or do I take Herbert, who's a much safer asset, or do I just tear up and get Caleb, or do I tear back and get like a Purdy love and get on top added value? He's in that tough situation where it's like, I probably won't really own him, but I'm rooting for him. I love the player. I think the breakout is coming. There's a, there's a great chance. If he smashes, he's going to be a phenomenal player, mm -hmm. top five talent. There's just not a high enough floor long term within the next three to five years that like I want to in invest in him because I just rather Kyler. So it's not like we've talked about this before, Dad. It's not I hate this player because I rather this guy, right? It's just I just rather take this guy at value, mm -hmm. and that's that's why I went on Richardson because I'll just take Kyler. So it's tough for me, but like he's a guy I root for. He's a great player. There's a chance that 
if he does get hurt, he's going to probably fall outside the top 10 QBs because then he's going to get that injury-ridden label. Everyone's going to be like, eh, I don't want him. He just gets it, injured. He's if he fall. plays 12 games, he maintains being a first-round pick. Yeah. If he plays four games, he's going to fall into the end of the second, early third. I think he becomes a screaming value at that point. I'll he's that, him all day if he does He's that, that guy. I, I was trading him plus – or sorry, I traded him for Stroud plus – after the rookie drafts, and now yeah, I think I if if I am a win now team, I would not mind. You know, I did trade one C.J. Stroud for Anthony Richardson in a first because I'm I'm all in. I'm kind of moving that area, but it's because I have a QB three of Jared Goff again. Yeah, you know, like Jared Goff's my QB three everywhere because that's just that's how you build that up. Yep. Snook, we are we have him as QB ten, but a lot of people have him outside the top twelve. But this is a guy whose resume. He has thrown for over 5,000 yards. He has been the QB2 overall. And now, Justin Herbert, I've got in Smash Except 15 at the 202. That's pick 14. Like, that's crazy. After 11 quarterbacks, he was the 12th guy off the board. Man, I mean, this is, you know, you know, I love Justin Herbert. This is a player that has just always been dealt the wrong cards, right? Yeah. He came in. 80% 80% of the league is busting if they're in Justin Herbert's shoes. Like, there is a select handful of quarterbacks in the league right now. Like, you're Josh Allen, you're Mahomes, you're, you're Burroughs. I, I can't even say Joe Burrow because he's never played with no weapons. Right. Ever. He's never played in a situation where he's had no weapons. Justin Herbert, I mean, Austin Eckler was injured last year. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Like, they never play Keenan Allen mm-hmm. and Mike Williams. So, Justin Herbert's always used to throwing to, like, Simi Fahiku and... Josh Palmer and all these guys. I'm pretty sure Justin Herbert has the most touchdowns to an undrafted free agent in the league and since he's entered the league. Like he has done it all. Like it doesn't matter who he's thrown the ball to, he will make it work. They finally he has two all pro type tackles. Like they built that O line. They built that running back room up a little bit. They they brought in Ladd. Hopefully Quentin Johnson can take a decent stride at year two. Josh Palmer is a great possessional, just number three, number two option. I think he is going to be a guy that finishes top 10 to 12. I don't think he's going to be a guy that has 5,000 yards and 40 touchdown passes. But if he throws for 4,500 yards and like 25, 28 touchdowns, that's very realistic for him. And I think he's going to be a much more efficient passer in this offense with a brand new coaching staff. And I just think that he is a guy that is so safe. He got the contract. He's in a good situation, hopefully long term now. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep bringing in assets for him. He's just a guy that you can guarantee. He's like getting Dak Prescott at 25 years old, right? Like you can just guarantee he's going to be a guy that puts up good stats, puts up good numbers. And if he gets that CD lamb eventually, like he's going to be a guy that jumps into that top five again. Yeah, exactly. He is where CJ Stroud is now two years ago. Yeah. Justin Herbert was the QB four. Now he's all the way down at the QB 10 to 12 range. I think you're right. I think we're going to see a couple seasons where he bounces into that, you know, top five to eight range, but he feels like a real safe top 12 quarterback in, yep. year in and year out. How are you going about acquiring him? Because everybody's like, should I be selling him? And I mean, like, no, buy him. Unless, unless you you're can not going to get anything for him. You're not going to get the right, unless you get Purdy in a first, which you're not going to do. Like, there's, after 12, I get, I start to really debate on who to take. I think he's a buy, but what's it going to cost to get him? Like, how are you tearing down and how are you tearing up? I think you could tear off Richardson, Caleb, and Kyler right there. I'd probably look more to go higher, though. I'd probably tear off Lamar, Burrow, those type of guys and try to get like a first on top if you need to, if you need to add value to your roster elsewhere. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson are going to outscore Joe, Justin Herbert next year. Kyler is going to outscore him. But if your team needs that extra value, you're getting still a, a top 10 foundational quarterback piece and added value to your roster elsewhere to build it out. Because talent, like situation, everything aside, you're looking at talent through a lens. Justin Herbert's up there in the top five to six as a pure talent. He is a phenomenal athlete. So I mm-hmm. hope Greg Roman, he loves those rushing quarterbacks and he loves that like West Coast style, like read option type of play. I hope he takes that athleticism and uses it for Herbert. Because we might see that 500 rushing yard and five to six touchdowns in an offense where he mm-hmm. might have to run and use his legs more and create, be more of like a guy that can create with his big arm and with his athleticism, like like a Josh Allen. Because he is a he was like a four six three runner at the forty, jumped mm-hmm. out of the room, like was an elite Ross score athlete, better than Josh Allen at the combine. 
Like he should be a guy that should rush for 500 yards and five to seven touchdowns. Maybe we see some more around the goal line. I, I think we could see a new Justin Herbert unlocked in this offense, and I'm excited for it. So now we're getting to my favorite guy to talk about because this was someone that I said last year and even the year before. All my rebuilding teams have him. I had Josh Allen was my most owned quarterback. And then Jalen Hurts. My most owned quarterback now is Jordan Love. Jordan Love, if you look at what he did, QB5 last year just absolutely blew up. Whenever I post about Jordan Love online, I get people coming at me and be like, ah, he's, he's mid. Finishes the QB5. Over the final seven weeks of the season, he finished as the QB2 only behind Josh Allen. He has a full complement of weapons. None of them are the alpha wide receivers, but he's got a big time set with Wicks and Reed and Watson and Dobbs and Kraft and Musgrave. I mean, he has a fantastic crew around him. This is someone that Snoog, when, when he was coming out, people were saying his ceiling was Patrick Mahomes, but his floor was much lower. If he was a rookie, which he really was, you know, that was his first year starting. If he was an actual rookie and that was his, you know, he just got drafted round one and had that season, he would be up there with C.J. Stroud. Yeah. No doubt about it. But because he sat for two years grooming behind Aaron Rodgers, now everyone's like, well, it's not the same. It should be. Like, you can still I, – I traded Lamar Jackson for him in a first the other day. I still think that Jordan Love, by the time this season is over, will be a top eight super flex quarterback. I think – and I think he could even be higher than that. And that's crazy because a lot of people say, yo, Dad, it was a fluke. I mean, he sat there for two years grooming. He showed everything. He showed poise in the pocket. He showed that he was maturing throughout the season and showed that he can have weak, you know, weak winning performances. And then someone told me that he wasn't consistent. So I pulled it up. He had 10 top 12 weeks. He had five weeks in between quarterback 14 and quarterback 16. He had two weeks in in quarterback 20 to 24 range, zero outside the top 24. You don't get more consistent than that. He was a top 16 quarterback, 15 of 17 games. Who else can you tell that other than the big three? Yeah, Sorry, exactly. I got, I got excited, man. Yeah, and I don't blame you. I mean, this is a guy that came onto the scene. He, he blew up. I'm pissed because I loved him. I had so many shares of him throughout his first two seasons, and I decided to get rid of him. And a lot of leagues, just as throwing trade, just like, get off my team. I'm sick of you now. And then Aaron Rodgers gets traded, and he's the starter. And I'm like, damn it. Like, now Jordan Love's going to get his shot finally. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that has just a phenomenal arm talent. He reminds me a lot of Matt Stafford. Just can throw the ball forever. Like, he's just a phenomenal thrower. He's like that Joe Flacco, that Matt Stafford arm talent. Just can throw the ball 40, 50 times a game. And, and that's how he's going to be in this offense. They got mm -hmm. a great run game there for him finally. Added offensive lineman. Wicks is going to take that next step. Jaden mm -hmm. Reed's great. Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs, Tucker Craft. Like, they have a young ascending offense around them. I really think Wicks has that potential to develop into a really good wide receiver for him. He fits his play style well. He separates really well. He's, he's that big, fast, athletic wide out. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love is a guy that, yeah, he made a ton of mistakes, turned the ball over when he shouldn't have. That happens when you're a But he's a rookie. Starter. No exactly. one else... Everyone else, they give him a pass on you that because they were the actual out. rookie. The dude yeah. beat the Cowboys. Like, he won yeah. playoff games. Like, he almost yep. beat the Niners. Like, he made noise. It wasn't a fluke. Like, if, yeah. if it was, it was a crazy fluke, and I'll be okay getting fooled by it because there's what? nothing looking at that and like, damn, like, my process is bad. Like, no. Yeah. You have to be really, really, really unlucky to have him be a fluke. And he's more athletic than people give him credit for, too. 240 yeah. yards and five rushing touchdowns. That yeah. gives him a floor. And I feel like... He I think is Stroud, going to be I in that area. Has, him and Stroud have that same type of floor. I think they're both similar athletes. Maybe four or five rushing touchdowns. Maybe they can sniff 300, 400 rushing yards yeah. if, they, if they crack well, a couple long ones. But. Stroud has more poise in the pocket to, to yeah, extend he, plays. Smart, Love, yeah. Love has more athleticism, I think. You yeah. know what I mean? Like for extending plays in a different way. Like he's, yeah. he's going to make them, you know make yep. people respect him there. So there's one more guy, and I debated having him as a foundational quarterback, but I do think the value is there. I don't care where he was drafted. I don't care, you know, wh what kind of contract situation is right now. Brock Purdy is still a foundational quarterback. Yeah, I think you could argue a few guys here. Like, you could probably argue Dak. You could argue T-Law. You could probably throw in Jaden Daniels and Drake May oh, into the mix here. Don't say Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> I just... No, what? 
Oh man, we'll and we'll get to him. You I go think, talk. You I talk Purdy. You can make arguments with these guys, but yeah. I mean, how do you not like a situation like the 49ers? I mean, Shanahan, like they they built a powerhouse team. Ricky Pearsall, Debo, Ayuk, Jacob Cowing, George Kittle, CMC, like. I mean, come on. He closes his eyes and throws the football up and someone's coming down with it. Like, mm-hmm. he's going to put up numbers. He's going to get paid. He was really efficient. He was good on third downs. He was great in, in certain situations last year. I mean, they should they should have won the Super Bowl. Like, they really should have. They choked that bad. Mm-hmm. I, I think if he won the Super Bowl, Brock Purdy would be in everyone's top t- 8 to 10 rankings right mm-hmm. now. And I truly think that people were just so harsh on him just because of where he was drafted and who he is and his situation. Don't bash him for a situation. I don't give a damn if he ever wins a Super Bowl. He's giving me fantasy points, and he's in a great situation. That's what we want. I don't yep. care if you think he's good. I don't care if you think his, if his talent's good. I don't care if you think Dak is more talented than him. Like That doesn't matter when you're, when you're playing fantasy football and you're a quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's the weapons around you. Can you use your legs, or can you throw the ball 4,000 yards and throw for 40 touchdowns? And that's, that's what he can do. So I'm with you, my guy. The last guy that I, you know, I think ends up joining the foundational group. I mean, you you said Trevor Lawrence, you know, and I, I really want Trevor Lawrence to to ascend into that area. Drake and I think May. people talk about people talk about Tua Tagovailoa in that area, and it's like Tua disappears. If you look at what he does, the back eight in back to back seasons, he's been outside the top twenty quarterbacks. That's not foundational to me. He doesn't have that trade value. He doesn't go in the top three rounds, you know. And I think that's what we talk about is the criteria of. Under 29 years old, and the only reason we say 29 is because that's Mahomes. It will be 29 this year. We say that they got to go in the first three rounds, and they got to have trade value. And if you go league to league, Tua Tagovailoa and Trevor Lawrence do not have trade value in a lot of leagues. The guy that, and you're going to puke, you're not going to like this, but the guy that will be foundational as of next year, maybe as of midseason, the rushing quarterbacks. Justin Fields was a QB1 as a rookie. Lamar Jackson was a QB1 as a rookie. Kyler Murray was a QB1. RBG3 was a QB1. Jaden Daniels will be a QB1 as a rookie. And here's why I'm investing in him now is that's going to happen. He's going to blow up. He's going to finish in the top 12, just like Justin Fields did. And then he's going to put himself into an area where he is worth a first-round startup pick. Then you trade him. You get into that area and then you trade him then because there are some some things that you can pick out in his game. He could get injured a lot. Like, what's the difference, Snoop, between Anthony Richardson and Jaden Daniels' injury history? You know, like he has the potential to rush for a thousand yards. I think his floor is six to seven hundred yards rushing, which makes him automatically a QB one. And you don't like Jalen Hurts. You don't have to love the talent. You just have to respect the fact that he's going to score points. So from him, from me. Him, McCarthy, and May are the, are are more are closer to foundational than Trevor Lawrence and Tua Tagovailoa because those guys have played and they haven't shown it yet. They haven't showed us that they are someone that we're going to invest in week in and week out. May, McCarthy, and Daniels, we shall see how that falls out. And I know you're a little bit more on the Drake May. I have been seeing Drake May go one eight to one ten lately, and it just blows my mind. Man, I need that discount on him. I mean, he's a guy. He's gonna have to have a little bit of an up uphill battle climbing he didn't get blessed like like caleb jj or even daniels with the situation but i mean if you just look at the talent between the four of them like he's right there with caleb like he is a phenomenal talent he could throw the ball 70 yards he's a good rushing quarterback he has that rushing upside like he's a great athlete i just i just see it with him he's just that guy that like you watch and you're like that guy has that guy can play ball like i don't care the mm-hmm. situation like i know situation matters for quarterback but Something about Drake May, like, I, I just refuse to give up, like, what he's been through college, like, what he did with that horrible UNC offense year after year. Mm-hmm. He elevated everybody around him. He's going to do the same thing with the Patriots. Him, Jaden Daniels, Dak could slip up into this, like, top 13, 13 oh, through Oh, no, Dak 16. is QB. Dak could be QB 10 to 12. He just yeah. falls out of that foundational, foundational thing that we're trying to go exactly. with here. Drake May, and Jaden Daniels, and maybe Trevor Lawrence, if he can finally put it all mm-hmm. together. If T-Law uses his legs, he'd be found. Like, he'd be awesome. Like, yeah. He's such a good athlete. He could rush for 600 yards. Like You see how mm-hmm. fast he is? He's like a gazelle. And he's a good rusher. I don't know why he doesn't do it. It drives me insane. But like if he figured that out, him, Drake May, Jaden Daniels are three guys outside of that top 12 that I think could comfortably be a safe like more than 50 percent chance of jumping into that top 12 
Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, yeah. and I think what I've been telling people is if you're rebuilding right now and you have the 101, you can get a first to move 101 to 104. And I've had a couple people in the Patreon that I have had them where I look at their roster and I'm like, this roster is two years away because a good rebuild takes two years. A guy in the Patreon today, we got Caleb Williams traded for Drake May and two firsts because he got him at 108. Like two firsts? How much insulation do you need? Like if those, even if one of them hits, so you get, you know, Burden, May, and a, a late first to do something else with, you just start putting more arrows in your in, in your quiver to give yourself a shot. So I love it. Snoop, this was a fun episode. It's great to have you back from Vegas. This was a fun one. Make sure you guys tune in. Thanks again for just, thanks again for tuning in and enjoy the process. We saved all the energy for the pod. That was fun.